It is my distinct pleasure to be here with you today. I am very pleased that the university has an institute to study human beings because in this universe that we inhabit, the human being is central to that universe. We can talk about the digital economy, we can talk about ancestry, we can talk about history, we can talk about various disciplines, but it all comes together with people. And in terms of our future, it's the child that is the center of that future. And I'm pleased that the rector has mentioned what he has about an interdisciplinary approach because the interdisciplinary approach is the only way to deal with the issues that confront our society. Uh, the International Union claims uh, its history from the 100th anniversary of the French Revolution in 1889 when the first International Congress was held. Oops. The International Union has uh, over 90 country members and represents all fields of psychology. And we have representation at the United Nations at the third tier, the ECOSOC level. In the World Health Organization, we play the lead role in diagnostics and we're a key player at UNESCO and the International Council for Science and Social Science which is going to merge to form the International Social Science Council. So we represent over two million psychologists worldwide. State obligations are to protect our children in all these areas that are mentioned. And this comes from the Convention on the Rights of the Child, which was adopted only in 1989, whereas this is the 71st year of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So we must learn from our past in order that our children don't inherit the terrible history that mankind has been beset with. Children also have rights, but we tend to look at them as if they are objects in need only of care and protection. Davison, who is a minister in uh, the United Kingdom, says children are left very vulnerable to the influence and actions of adults around them because not all adults have the welfare of children as a priority. We can categorize these rights into four rights. One is the right to survival, a, a healthy well-being, and yet the world over, we're confronted with hundreds of millions of children who don't enjoy these basic rights. Infant mortality, is still very high in most parts of the world, including parts of the developed world. The statistics coming from the United States, which claims leadership in almost all areas by itself, has the worst record that you can think about. Then there's the right to development, education, recreation, and importantly, for children to not only be involved in learning, but to participate in that learning to promote understanding, tolerance, and friendship amongst nations. Ethnic groups, 
and religious groups. And our world is facing a scourge of hatred where even traveling from one city to another can become hazardous. And children are becoming used as objects of hatred and to cause chaos in our world. We need to ensure that our children are subjected to not the harms of the past, but to a, a vision of society that can ensure their spiritual, mental, and psychological well-being. The third category can be the right to protection, much of which is going to be part of this conference. But importantly, many of our children confront a distorted sense of reality. When the radio is turned on, social media, television, there's hardly a newscast or a news report that does not show somebody being maimed, some site of warfare, some site of terror, and our children are being socialized by this on a daily and constant basis. What does it do to their personality, to their very sense of self, their ability to be whole, even though in that particular town, in that particular village, it may be stable, but the messages coming to our children constantly is horror that happens through maiming, murder, killing. And then importantly, the right to participation, the fourth leg, to expression, information, and shaping one's own belief against that doubt where the news presents a version of what some people want the truth to be. That version that we, we look at when CNN is turned on, when the BBC is turned on, when different television stations are turned on, it's geopolitics through national interests that get put out there. So at a particular time, it can be Russia and its president who becomes the bogeyman of the world. At another time, it becomes Iran and the nuclear uh, capability or other countries as they may happen to be in favor or out of favor at a particular time. So our children are confronted with images, with thought that makes them blighted in how they see the world. Fact is doubted and fiction or a political version of truth becomes the reality. We need to ensure the survival of all of humanity and appropriate development is important. We as scientists, as people involved in this area, need to translate our research into viable policies that influence government in health, in education, and in all spheres of development so that we can secure a common future for all of us. We should be like Sergei Kosakov was, he was a participant in that first International Congress of Psychology in 1889. He was called the Russian Pinel, because at that time, Pinel introduced major reforms to psychiatric well-being, and in the United States, it was very backward. So I'm hoping that the leadership in Russia, at Moscow State University, in early childhood, care and education supported by UNESCO, by colleagues participating, can lead the way in moving us away from a world where our children live in doubt, fear, ignorance, and are blighted in what reality actually is, thus doubting themselves. I wish you well in this conference.